Hey everyone, it's Caleb. So in the last couple years, I've made a bunch of C++ content here on YouTube, and I get a lot of requests on how to make C++ a little bit more approachable. So I decided I'm going to recreate some C++ content, hopefully get into some more modern C++, some better ways of doing things, and some more project-based C++. And one of these things that I wanted to talk about is how to get started with C++ the absolute easiest. It sounds simple, but it can actually be a little bit complicated when I'm teaching to people with different operating systems, different IDEs or different text editors. And ultimately, I want to get everybody on the same page so that they can write C++ code like this. Now, I mean, obviously, we're going to get into some more advanced C++, but I mean, I want you to be able to run code and get a result. Now, one thing you should understand is that C++ code in general is C++ code, meaning you can take this exact code and you can execute it in Sublime or Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or our uh, sponsor for this miniature series here, which is actually Embarcadero. And Embarcadero is an IDE. So if you want to build visual C++ applications, then you can look into Embarcadero. So I'm gonna share a quick message from them, and then I'm gonna jump in to how you can start writing C++ code in the browser in a notebook environment. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So I've been doing my C++ development here in Sublime just because I like really lightweight text editors, but I even had to do some configurations to get this working myself. And I don't want you to have to do that. I want you to be able to go to you know Google Chrome and then just start typing C++ code so you can start experimenting. And then once you have these principles understood, you can you know take pieces of code and you can put them in a larger project. And that's where you might need some more sophisticated editing program. It also really depends on your goals with C++ because if you want to have nice input and output displayed in what this is a notebook environment, this right here is actually Python, but this structure is very nice for data science applications or basically where you need to show the process of what you're doing step by step. And I say data science because if you imagine in data science, you're trying to make some prediction and you, you have some input and then you just do a bunch of processing and give some output. Like for example, based on your medical records, we think you have cancer, but it doesn't really show that process. Well, it's very common in the data science field to show hey, here's how we're getting this data. Here's the cleaning process we're going through. Here's how we're going to train our model and run predictions on this model. And they'll display those in step-by-step -step pattern in a notebook environment. It's also really good to show different concepts. So for example, I'm gonna be building one of these out for C++ and I'll leave a sign up link in the description. So basically I'm gonna be building out, hey, here's our tips, our step-by-step -step learning for C++ for this series. So if you're just jumping in, it might be a little bit bare, but as we go on, we're gonna build more and more concepts into the C++ notebook. So my question is, how can I do something like this, which is in Python, but with C++? So I was able to figure it out, and I just realized I have a ton of tabs open, sorry for that. But here we have a C++ application that I'm running in a Jupyter notebook style. So, you know, we can include the things we need, we can do outputs, we can do conditionals, and we can also explain what we're doing as we go. Also, this works in a very interactive way. So you can basically give it some input and it'll give you the output in a REPL style fashion, a read eval print loop. So it sort of works like that where I can basically invoke some function and it's going to give me the output there even though I didn't do a standard output. So I'm not gonna get into all the details of how this works because we're gonna be using tools like these for our, our new series, however, I just wanted to explain, you can go in here and you can make some expression like five plus five. And when you execute this, you're going to get the return of 10. So it's very nice to do quick testing and evaluating of values. And then once you have some working code you like, you can take pieces from it and bring it over into any other C++ projects. So now let's talk a little bit about how to get an environment like this set up. Well, this one is all local on my machine, local host. So I have Jupyter installed. I have the C++ kernel installed with this thing called Zeus. 
However, you don't have to have all these tools installed locally because you can use them in the cloud. So what you can do is you can go to jupyter.org and try out Jupyter Lab in your browser and then try Jupyter with C++. And it's gonna take some time to pop up, but eventually you're going to have a C++ environment that you can go through and work with. Now, the warning here that I wanna give you, just so you guys are clear, this is not an environment associated with your account. It's not like a Google Drive account where you can store all your C++ files. This is just a temporary environment. So if you leave your computer and come back, it's probably gonna time out and you're gonna lose your work. <laughs> I speak from experience. So when you're done, just go ahead and hit this download button and that's going to download the notebook, which you can then take yourself into your local environment or you could upload it in GitHub and GitHub does have the ability to render the outputs basically in HTML, but you're not gonna be able to interact with the code, but that's perfectly fine because when you have your code up in GitHub, what you can do is you can basically take this notebook and relaunch it in an interactive environment. So for example, in this Python tips directory, I can take this GitHub repo and I can go to this tool, mybinder.org and I can paste that repository web address and then hit launch. And this is going to go through the process of building a local environment for you to develop on. So this is maybe seems weird to a lot of you. Like, why do you need to go through all of this stuff just to develop C++ code? And yeah, I mean, that's fine. If you have a C++ environment already developed locally and you can execute C++ code, then great. My goal is to make it as easy as possible to get started. So you go to a web browser, you go to jupyter.org, you hit try in your browser and then try with C++ and then you can start developing C++ code. So it took me 10 seconds as opposed to in my C++ series, you know, a video or two just to show you how to get an environment set up and half the people watching weren't even able to get it set up. So here we go, we got a C++ application and it took only a couple of seconds. So this is a weird video because I didn't really want to go into a tutorial. I just kind of wanted to do an update and get everybody on the same page with some of the upcoming content we're gonna be releasing on this series. And also the new style of notes I'm going to be creating. They're gonna be in notebook format, so it's really easy for you to interact with them, test them out, and then copy that code and bring it into your own projects. So, yep, that's just an introduction. Let me know in the comments the kind of content you wanna see for the new C++ series. Go ahead and give Jupyter a try just to get some experience with it. And you can feel it out, see if it's what you like or if you prefer the more um, IDE or text editor like experience, you can do that locally and get that set up for upcoming content. Honestly, I like both. It really just depends on what I'm doing. I, I can use notebooks here and then I can go over to a text editor or IDE here. So thank you so much for watching this introduction and we're going to look at a lot of cool stuff. So I'm really excited and I'll see you in the next video. Please be sure to subscribe and check out the link in the description for the newsletter where I'll be able to let you know of new content coming out. Thank you, see ya.